Hello there, and welcome back. My name is Sean Reimer. I do not rhyme, and uh, I have my cup of Earl Grey, so uh, you know we're going to be talking about Star Trek Picard. For the first time with Star Trek Picard, I have made it through, and it's, well, no, I watched, I watched all of season one and immediately uh, regretted it, so that's probably why I went into season two. Um, like, as soon as that started getting bad after the first episode, I was like, okay, hey, no, I just PTSD. And uh, season three, I completely gave up on, which, shame on me, because season three is actually really, really fucking good. Like, and I feel ashamed because the whole thing with Picard, like, I, I feel like it was supposed to be about just Jean-Luc um, trying to find himself after... Uh, after retirement and and that sort of thing and being swept back into an adventure but um, like I, I I wanted it in a way to be like just him I want him to have his own sort of story but as soon as as soon as the next generation cast comes in there uh, like everything got perfect well not perfect but like infinitely better than what I had to deal with with season one and season two not to take away from Patrick Stewart at all like he he's doing an amazing job all the actors are are doing an amazing job it's just I the writing I feel like and and the show writing or show running I feel like getting Terry to to do the the show running aspect uh no offense Alex King uh I was gonna call him Alex Kingston Alex Kurtzman uh I just I don't think he's the right person at all I feel like um a lot of his Hollywood tropes are overdone, and I feel like he hasn't really contributed anything meaningful to, to Trek. I feel like he's forcing a lot of elements in, so I'm really glad to have something else and prove that new Trek works. So yeah, Star Trek Picard, season three at least, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. A very fitting end, uh, and an absolute joy. One area, or I guess four areas that I feel like uh, could use massive improvement all contain enterprises. For those who haven't watched Star Trek Picard season three, here's your chance to fuck off or click away, I should say. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be less aggressive and more not politically correct. I don't want to use those words because I hate those words, but just more accepting, I should say. But seriously, if you haven't watched it, fuck off. If you've watched the final episode, the final two episodes, the Enterprise D comes back. Yeah, Jordy rebuilt the Enterprise D, essentially. Well, eh, not, not really. Basically just took the saucer that was stuck on that planet and then stuck it on a random star drive section that he had laying around. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the Enterprise D is back and it kicks ass. Um, them getting the Enterprise D back, like it, it oddly enough, kind of reminded me of uh, the ending of Top Gun Maverick because you see Maverick and Rooster going to an F-14 again and it was kind of nostalgic to see an F-14 kick so much ass the Enterprise D pretty much does the same thing it, it like kicks like it destroys a bunch of Borg and it's it's wonderful and considering it was the flagship and it, it was the centerpiece the setting uh the hero ship of the next generation which was an absolute phenomenon very well earned, and I think the ending of it finally going into the ship museum where it belongs after after all these years, it really, um, it, it was really a a swan song for the Enterprise D, which I felt like we never really got in Star Trek Generations, and it I really like it because it's it's a big middle finger to uh, the writers and producers of Star Trek Generations. I hate this. It is revolting! Destroying the Enterprise-D simply because, uh, well, it's too big and we can't mount it, so we need a smaller ship. And then literally two movies after that, they're like, yeah, we're going to switch to CGI models, so what the fuck was the point in that? Um, so yeah, Enterprise-D, excellent. Excellent ending for the Enterprise-D. Uh, I can't say the same about the Enterprise-E. Or the Enterprise-F. Or in the Enterprise G, and I know the Enterprise G has like barely been a thing, but I already think it's off to a bad start. I feel like the Enterprise D coming back has really disrespected three Enterprises. It's like they brought one Enterprise back, and then they told three others that they didn't matter, which I feel like shouldn't be a thing with the Enterprise because it it tarnishes the name Enterprise. It's 
really offensive to people who who cared about these ships and uh, invested a lot of time into creating them. And that, that's that's more about uh, the Enterprise E and the Enterprise F. So, so let's get into it. The writers of Star Trek Picard Season 3, they do realize that the Enterprise E, like, characters were excited about the Enterprise E. Like, they, they were like, oh my god, it's state of the art, it's gonna, it's gonna kill all the Borg. Like, you realize, like, a lot of the conflict in Star Trek First Contact was Picard desperately trying not to blow up the ship. No! No! This beautiful ship, like, look at this thing. Like, the fucking Diamond Select did a great job, but look at this ship. The fate of it was summed up in a joke, a 10 second joke. So the joke is they're they're all on the Enterprise D trying to figure out what to do and they realize how underpowered they are, which no offense to the Enterprise D, but it's a galaxy class. It's, it's more meant for exploration and that type of thing. And then they all come to the consensus that they can't use the Enterprise E. And as soon as that is said, Worf is like, not my fault. And that's it. So from that, we've gathered that, like, I'm not opposed to Worf being the captain of the Enterprise. I think that's really cool. Like, go on, Worf. Like, it's awesome. Like, like Data, Worf, um, even Jordy. Jordy would have been really cool. I know Jordy was more into the galaxy classes, but I don't know. That could have worked, too. And you, you hear Worf say, not my fault. Or, or something along those lines, and it's like, seriously, Worf, what, what the fuck did you do? It, it's summed up in, in like, this article that you have to read, like, about the incident. No one knows about the incident. It's, it's online. So, when you watch this, to figure out the fate of the Enterprise E, you gotta read this article that doesn't go into a lot of detail. So, it's, it's a classic case of show, don't tell. And then it's like, Something's telling me that Worf, when he was captaining the Defiant against the Borg, he was thinking ramming speed. I, I feel like that's Worf's signature move. Something's telling me that he went ramming speed on another ship or something like that with the Enterprise E and destroyed it, which the Enterprise E's already rammed into another ship. Like Picard did it in Nemesis, we all saw it. Why would the Enterprise E get destroyed that way? Unless it was somehow even worse, like Worf didn't stop, or just like, warp, what if you went like warp speed into it? Warp speed, mind you. Show don't tell. You're, you're not gonna show what happened to the Enterprise E, you're just gonna sum it up with a joke. The ending, or the fate of the Enterprise E, which by the way, we've been wondering about since since Star Trek Nemesis came out a pretty long time and then they they rebooted everything and then that didn't work and then they started to do a prequel and then they did a sequel for Star Trek Picard but then they didn't show any Enterprise in there so we're scratching our heads for how long about what happened to the Enterprise E uh, and then Star Trek Online brings out the Enterprise F in 2409 and it's like okay so the Enterprise E existed from the early 2370s until possibly past the 2400s but that's that's all we really had to rely on so we're, we're desperately like dying for information about this the ship that's been in three movies and by the way it's done a lot for the federation it stopped a giant borg attack and then the enterprise went back in time to stop the borg from disrupting first contact and zephram cochran's warp flight <laughs> And then it, it went through something in Star Trek Insurrection. Uh, I've watched Star Trek Insurrection. I swear to God, I've watched it. I just can't figure out what's going on. Like, I, it's it's really nothing. It is such a nothing, boring Star Trek movie. Uh, like, people knock Nemesis, but my God, like, at least Nemesis has a kick-ass fight battle. And I, I know people are going to be like, the, oh, the Riker maneuver, but that, that's besides the point. It gets into a heated, heated battle with uh, um, this Romulan clone of Picard, which is a kind of stupid concept, but like the fight was really awesome. And then you get the Romulans in there helping out um, the, the Federation, which was the first time we saw that. And then to top it all off, Picard's like, you know what? I'm just going to kamikaze into this thing with the Enterprise. The Enterprise E is now a punchline. So that's great because the Enterprise E is my favorite Enterprise, aside from. The next Enterprise. Tea break, very important. So, for those who don't know from my previous live streams and a, a few videos I've made, including a Top Geek episode where I explain how to play Star Trek Online, I am a massive fan of Star Trek Online. Early into Star Trek Online's life cycle, 
they created a contest. The developers came up with a contest for fans to design the next Enterprise. And this was incredible. It's like, oh my god, like, we finally, we've seen so many Enterprises. Like, what, what would the next Enterprise look like? It's in our hands. And the concept that was created was stunning. And I love it. Like, it's, you could see it's an evolution of the Enterprise. It's not something drastic but at the same time enough changes are made and you can kind of see how the federation is growing uh even in 2409 in the star trek online universe um i feel like a lot of the concepts for the enterprise f were um taken from the events going on in the game which were very much um there was a lot of war and there was a lot of battles and that sort of thing so i was almost expecting like an even more warship enterprise than the enterprise e but they came up with a fusion of the enterprise d and the enterprise e and you can almost tell it's a fusion where um, it's definitely meant for exploration. But if it needs to defend itself, it's very, very heavily armed, uh, which I feel like is perfect. Like, it's the perfect way to do the Enterprise. It's what the Enterprise should be. It should be great at both, not just exploration and not just a battling. Cause th that's something the Enterprise has been missing since the Enterprise D uh, couldn't fight and the Enterprise E couldn't really explore. Like, I, we didn't really see it too much. And then to, to further that, the stuff that it does in the game, like how it definitely benefits the Federation and definitely deserves the name Enterprise. Captain Sean, which is really funny, by the way, when we're playing it, I call him Captain Sean. He calls me Captain Sean. Not really, because he, he doesn't say that, but I, I really wish he would, because I, I help out a lot. So the Enterprise F, under Captain Sean's command, does a lot for the Federation, defends the Federation from Iconians, from a Fallout Terran invasion at one point, from the return of the Dominion, like, it stopped the Dominion War from happening again, which I feel like we can all agree, like, say what you will about Wolf 359, but I feel like the Dominion War doesn't get enough attention for how horrific that was, and how much of a pain in the ass for the Federation that was. And it's beautiful, and it means a lot in the game, and it's focused on quite a bit, and it's a key player. And it, it earns the name Enterprise more than, I would say, a, a few Enterprises, by that matter. And then we get the news, finally, uh, after Season 2 included a lot of Star Trek Online ships, the Enterprise F is now in Season 3 of Picard. There you go. The next Enterprise. Awesome. Like the, Granted, it's, it's a little ahead of schedule, because in Star Trek Online, the Enterprise F is launched in 2409, or around then. Star Trek Picard Season 3 takes place in, uh, what was it, 2401, 2402, something like that. So, almost a decade in the past. So, it's like, okay, well, if it's launched then, then it, it'll be the next Enterprise. No. It is decommissioned then. So, for it to be decommissioned in 2401 or 2402, that means Enterprise E was in service for even less time than I envisioned. In Star Trek Online, it's state of the art, and it's already being de decommissioned. Like in in Picard, I don't I don't understand that. Maybe it'll have one last ride. Like they they keep saying in all these stupid Fast and Furious movies since Fast and Furious fucking five. Like it, maybe it'll like have a key role to play in season three. Like maybe it'll def like we'll we'll see it earn the name Enterprise. But no. We don't even see Captain Sean. Captain Sean, according to CBS, is not canon, even though they called Star Trek Online canon. What universe are we playing in? Anyway, it shows up for... I didn't count, but it felt like 20 seconds. It's Frontier Day. We got her captain making a very grand speech about the wonders of the Federation and how fucking awesome we are. It comes out of the station. Oh, the the Starbase, for 20 seconds, does a little thing through the fireworks, and then they show all the ships grouping together, and that's it. That's all we see of the Enterprise F. Just, oh, it's decommissioned now, but, but here it is, Star Trek Online fans. This is what you wanted, right? No! I want our Enterprise to mean something. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, it, it's a joke. It is a complete... An, utter joke like this ship took down Terran Wesley Crusher which yes that's a thing if you didn't know that was a thing and you're a Star Trek fan please play Star Trek online so yeah the, the Enterprise that meant the most now means nothing I need to drink my tea to calm down but now I have to talk about the Enterprise G 
which... <laughs> I'm not a fan. Let's start with the positives, okay? So, for, for those who don't know, the Titan A that they use for a lot of Picard uh, turns into the Enterprise G, uh, which, on, on one hand, like, I, I'm, I'm glad uh, Seven's a captain and even more glad she's the next captain of the enterprise like that's awesome the progression of her her character and like it, it's it's awesome like she's kicking ass like she's probably one of my favorite characters in star trek aside from uh no she's my favorite character in star trek screw you what was the point in renaming the titan a because uh, doing this dampers both the histories of the Titan and the Enterprise. Because, um, like, the Titan was Riker's ship. Like, that that earned a lot of pedigree. And you see it in Star Trek Lower Decks kicking ass and going on these insane missions. And it's, like, it earned its place. And now you're the Titan A. Okay, Titan doesn't matter anymore. We're not going to make any more Titans. Because, like, if a Titan B comes around, then why do we need a Titan B when you had a Titan A and you just renamed it? The Titan A is flying right now. It's right out there. On top of that, the the Titan A is, it's a step back in Trek design language. Like, I feel like um, you go through the Enterprise family tree and you can see sort of where Star Trek's evolving. You can see the different eras progress and you can see different designers really trying to, to evolve and not revolutionize which revolutionizes one thing but star trek picard takes that one step further and goes for nostalgia a certain amount of nostalgia is perfectly fine like just look at spider-man no way home <laughs> but you need to like if you're gonna look to the past that can't stop you from going forward you look at the titan a and they're doing the Constitution class again. The Excelsior, fine. Like, it, it's really cool to get some sort of um, updated look on the Excelsior. And then you got the Stargazer. I thought that ship looked amazing. The thing about the Enterprise G is it's already a concept for a ship that existed. Kinda. The designer of the, Interpri the Enterprise G, I almost called it Titan again there for a minute, took a concept that was made for around the motion picture, the original six movies kind of timeline, a lot around the 2280s, something like that. Uh, and basically just slapped newer Nate cells on it, called it a day. There's some areas I think the design works, and I think it would have worked a lot better if it was like a refit, refit of the Enterprise. Like if they introduced the Enterprise A and it looked like this, that would be awesome. You thought the Excelsior was hot shit? Well, look at the, look at the brand new Enterprise A. If you have that design as the Enterprise G, you look at the Enterprise family tree and then it, uh, like, you go from Constitution to, uh, you go to Excelsior, then you go to Ambassador, and then you go to Galaxy, then you go to Sovereign, then you go to Odyssey, and then you go all the way back to Constitution. It's, like, sure, it's a back to basics, but the Enterprise needs to evolve. It cannot devolve. Um, the Enterprise should never do that. And it's like Star Trek. Star Trek should be constantly progressing, and that's, that's the thing with New Trek lately. I feel like it's, it's regressing a lot. It's looking way too into the past, trying to recapture nostalgia while, while forcing the future instead of just living in it. Uh, a lot of it seems forced. Terry did an amazing job updating that for Star Trek Picard Season 3. I feel like it's a lot more focused and it's a lot more um, progressive and a little bit lighter too, not a lot of forced crap. But ultimately, I, I feel like the Enterprise G was an Enterprise designed by fans. Uh, even more so than the Enterprise F. Uh, retire the Constitution, find new ways to evolve the Enterprise without uh, without backtracking. Also, the Enterprise G feels like a, a half-assed Enterprise that isn't state-of-the-art. Like, they, they said the Titan got a refit, but then it still got old Titan internals, but it's like, the Titan existed from t the 2380s. It's a, by this point, it's a 20-year-old ship. I don't get why you'd want those internals. The, at least the original Enterprise, they said in the motion picture, it got, like, completely new systems and everything like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, um, really why they would give, like, an older ship, uh, the Enterprise name. The only time they really did that is when they renamed the USS Yorktown to the Enterprise A. 
But that fits the theme perfectly because the Enterprise A was meant to be a punishment to Captain Kirk for the events of Star Trek Three that uh, he created. And it really put a exclamation point on everything that Kirk did in that Enterprise A, I would say specifically in Star Trek VI, being able to unite the Federation and the Klingons. Um, it definitely earned that place because of that in that fleet museum, which, by the way, uh, Jack Crusher said that's his favorite, which I, you know what, at that angle, I agree with him because that was the Enterprise that was the worst, but it earned where it ended up, which I hope happens with the, the Enterprise G. I hope Seven of Nine and company can really thrust that Enterprise into being um, another generational Enterprise, because I feel like we've been missing that. But I feel like giving her an old ship uh, that was stripped of its name and given this kind of seems like a slap in the face. So yeah, Star Trek is like Bon Jovi. It's giving the Enterprise a bad name. I still really love Picard Season 3. I think it's the best new Trek has been for a while. Aside from Lower Decks and Strange New Worlds, those those are doing great. It feels like, oddly enough, because of this, that history is starting to forget the name Enterprise. I'm Sean Reimer. I don't rhyme. Thank you for all your patience. And thank you for watching the video. I'm doing something new. I have an outline of a script, and I'm just talking. In case you couldn't tell from all the rambling, this seems very, very improv. Um, and I really want to keep doing these videos. Um, this is how I want to do things going forward. So I hope you like it, and I'm really glad to be back. And I'm really glad to be working on myself right now. So take care of yourselves, please, and live long and prosper. Sanders out.